and welcome to the Study Travel TV studio in London. I'm Nicola Hancock and I'm Charlotte Darrell bringing you the latest study travel news stories. The headlines this week, Australian and Chinese associations relaxed over safety warnings, Canada's international education sector worth $15.5 billion and another increase in students for the Netherlands. So we start with a response from associations in Australia and China over safety warnings issued for students. Yes, associations have told Study Travel magazine that recent safety warnings for students issued by the Chinese consulate in Sydney should not greatly impact on enrolments. Last month, the consulate said that there had been several cases of violations of the physical and property safety of Chinese students in different parts of Australia. Some commentators have suggested the warnings may have been in retaliation of new laws in Australia targeting foreign influence. Phil Honeywood, Chief Executive of the International Education Association of Australia, said they were confident that the temporary political difficulties would be overcome and that the Chinese diaspora would play a huge role in allaying any fears. He said Australia was a safe destination and outlined the various welcome and support measures. Peng Sang, President of Chinese Agency Association Bossa, said that the warnings had not gathered significant attention in China and wouldn't affect students who wanted to study there. As reported last week, there was an 18% increase in Chinese students in Australia in 2017. Over in Canada, the international education sector was worth an estimated 15.5 billion Canadian dollars in 2016, according to new research released this week by the Canadian government. The value represented a 21% increase compared with the previous year, growth driven by a large rise in the number of long-term students, particularly those from India. Ontario accounted for around half of the value, followed by Vancouver. The authors said that the international education industry represented 14.5% of Canada's service sector exports and 3% of its total merchandise exports. And the Netherlands has also announced growth this week, where public higher education institutions welcomed a record 90,000 international students in 2017-18, a 9.3% increase compared with the previous year. Neighbouring Germany was the largest source market, followed by China. However, significant growth came from Italy, the UK, India and Spain, and the report's authors said universities were increasingly looking to Asia and Latin America for recruitment. International um, students represented almost 15% of all new enrolments at university, a ratio that was higher for master's programmes, around three quarters of which were delivered fully in English, the report's authors said. And now for a roundup of some of the other stories this week. The British Accreditation Council, or BAC, has launched the International English Language Providers Accreditation Scheme for ELT schools outside of the UK. BAC said it was designed to meet the increasing global need of high quality English education. ILSC Education Group has announced that its vocational Greystone College brand will open its third campus in Montreal in October with some courses to be delivered in French as well as English. The Occupational English Test, or OET, for healthcare professionals is now recognised by doctors regulatory bodies in the UK and Ireland, adding to recognition from the nursing associations. OET said several providers were currently developing exam preparation courses. ELT provider Langports has um, launched a new mature students programme, which uh, it said was the first dedicated course of its kind in Australia. And the Canadian government has announced that VF Holdings Limited has been awarded the contract to run its visa application centres and said it planned to increase the network of these across the world. Study in New Zealand has launched a new advanced search tool on its website following feedback from New Zealand institutions. And back in Canada again, Brock University on Ontario has announced plans to fund doctoral programmes for international student applicants. That's all for this week's news, sponsored by the Global Alliance of Education and Language Associations, or GALA. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Bye.